Welcome to lecture number 24 for EECE 461 control systems, PID compensators. Now, what we've looked at before would be gain compensation, K of S is K, or lead compensation. I've got a pole and a zero. The pole is bigger than zero. The idea being I'll use the zero to cancel the pole of the plant and pull it left. There's another type of compensator, PIDs. PIDs are um, actually extremely common. If you go out and buy PLCs, PLCs oftentimes will have a PID compensator built in to specify the gains P, I, and D, and you're up and running. What a PID compensator does, it has three gains. K of S has three terms. Uh, P, that's the gain compensation, meaning proportional. I, which is integral. I'll take the error, integrate it, times I. And D, take the error, differentiate it, and that tells you the U. By combining the proportional integral derivative, you can oftentimes control very many systems. The type of compensation we're going to look at would be combining some of these. You've got P compensation. We've looked at that already. That's just gain compensation. I compensators. That's I add an integrator. I add a zero, or add a pole at S equals zero. That makes the type zero system type one. A PI compensator. If I add these two terms together, turns out what you do is you add a pole at S equals zero, and add a zero. That zero lets you cancel the slow pull, speeding up the system. And the last one we'll look at is PID. I add a pole at S equals zero to make it type one, then add two zeros. Now, the reason PID is so common is, well, first off, it works. And it works for systems with the real poles that are stable. And that describes a lot of the systems you'll ever see. Plus, it's a type of compensator people can use. One knob is easy to adjust. For example, in VisSim, crank up the gain until you get 20% overshoot. That's easy. Two knobs can be tuned. It takes a little bit of trial and error, but by going back and forth, I can tune it. Uh, three knobs is a lot harder. You need some uh, training to adjust three knobs. Four knobs, people are helpless. So the reason we only have three knobs is because all people can handle. The approach that we're going to present in this lecture actually lets you handle as many knobs as you need. Uh, but to get to this point, you've had to have calculus, differential equations, circuits, electronics, signals, getting, then getting into controls, the idea of poles and zeros. It took a long time to get here, but there's actually an easier way to do it if you have that background. And we do, so we'll use that easier way. And it kind of reminds me of a story. One of my professors, J.D. Cowan, actually met Bodhi of Bodhi Plots. And Bodhi is a very famous controls engineer, one of the earlier ones in the 1900s. And Cowan do asked Dr. Bodhi, um, in all your years of designing feedback controllers, what's the most important thing you've learned for designing feedback controllers? And Bodhi told him, well, I'll tell you. If you want your control system to work, you've got to make sure the gains increase as you turn the knobs to the right. Uh, basically, people are going to sit there and tune the knobs, adjust the knobs on the fly. No matter what you do, the design that you have is for an idealized system. As they warm up, as it gets you know, throughout the day, as they start getting more wear and tear, the dyna dynamic will change slightly, so you need to adjust the knobs to tune them. Oh, uh, well, if you have the knobs go backwards, it's hard to tune. That's what, what, the, that's what Bodhi was saying. For PID compensators, if they have too many knobs, that's also hard to tune. So let's look at how you design a, B, a PID compensator. Uh, there's both hardware and software. In terms of hardware, if I want to build a PI compensator, here's the circuit. And this is actually a P or an I or PI. A proportional gain is let's set C equal to 0. And the gain is just R1 over R2. An integrator is set R1 to 0. And the gain is 1 over RC. Uh, PI compensator has three, three terms. And one way to see that is as S goes to infinity, I just have K times A. S goes to infinity, capacitors are short, I just have R1 over R2. Correction, as S goes to infinity, I just have K. And the, the zero. This is a variable resistor. At DC, it's a capacitor. High frequencies, it's R1. And where I switch is at 1 over RC. That's the numerator. At DC, it's A. High frequencies, it's S. I switch, I switch at A. 
So 1 over R1C is your 0. There's a second circuit, a PID compensator. This has the PI compensator plus this capacitor kind of bypasses R2. At high frequencies, the current or the impedance is 1 over J omega C. The impedance drops with frequency, gives you the, di the differentiator. This tends to be a noise amplifier, uh, but if you really want to build a PID circuit, here's one. And to illustrate uh, designing a PID compensator, let's take the same heat equation that we looked at before. If I have a heat equation modeled with five poles, and I want to use proportional feedback, I get the root locus shown in blue. And there's my design point. I'll have steady state air for step input. It's a type 0 system. If I want to get rid of the steady state air, I add an integrator. Had a pull at s equals 0. That forces the steady state air to 0 for step input. But what that also does is I now have the root locus go between these two poles, split apart, makes a really slow system. So now to, to define my feedback gain k, I need to find out where on the new root locus, the red root locus, does that intersect the damping curve? And it turns out that it intersects at 0.12 plus j.24. Again, the way you can find that is just do a search along this line until the angles add up. And basically, the complex part of g of s at s that on this line should be 0. Iterating, I should get this value for s. Once I find s, at any point g times k is minus 1, pick k to make the gain 1 at that point and you wind up with a gain of 0 0.397. Uh, with that, I have uh, my air constant kV is 0.24, and my input at t equals 0 is k of s as s goes to infinity, which is 0. So notice I compensators slow up a system, but they do force the steady state error to 0. To illustrate that, I'm going to take that same simulation of the metal bar, 10 element metal bar, and make the input v0 the integral of the error. So here's the error. This is the derivative of z. And then when I integrate, also integrate z. So I'm going to have the integral of e times 0.397. What that does is notice this is the input. I start out at 0. The integrator is doing a search. It's trying to figure out what should the input be to hold the output at 1. So it's searching, 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 and the error is positive, so I'm integrating up. Once the error goes to zero, I'll stop integrating. And I actually picked the gain that 0.397 was designed to give me a little bit of overshoot. So the tip ought to go a little bit too high. So there's the overshoot. As this goes positive, the input starts backing up because I'm integrating a negative number integrate negative number goes down. But that's how an integrator works. I start out at zero, that's my initial guess, and I integrate or search, try to figure out what should the input be to hold the output, and eventually it figures out, ah, I need an input of right around 1.44. You can also check your design in VSIM, as well as MATLAB. In VSIM, I input the plant. Here's my compensator with negative feedback. Tell it to run, and here I've got 20% overshoot just like I wanted, and settle set in about 40 seconds. It also goes to 1. It's a type 1 system, so it should track a constant set point. So that's integral control. If I want to implement it, I would just have an integrator, your r equals 0, and one of our rc is my gain. One of our rc is 0 0.397, so I pick c to be 1 microfarad, kind of arbitrarily. Solve for r, I get 2.5 meg. Uh, PI compensator. Uh, PI compensator says instead of just using an integrator term, I'm going to add a term. Add the P. What that does is put this over a common denominator and factor out the P. I'll call it K now. I can put the zero anywhere I want. Then add again, then add the integrator. Uh, since we know the transfer function, I know where the zero belongs. I've got a pole right here. This pole at 0.32 is causing trouble. It's slowing down the root locus. If I got rid of it, now the root locus could go between 0 and minus uh, 2.081 and give me the red root locus plot. So let's get rid of the problem child, the pole at minus 0.32. 
add a pull at s equals 0, that's my pi compensator. Again, cross multiply it, that's k times s over s, that's p, k times 0 0.32 over s, that's i, that's my pi gains. Draw the root locus, and now see where it hits. The damping line, I get 0.586. At any point in the root locus, g times k is minus 1. Solve for k at that point, and I get 5, and I have my design point. In this sim, I can simulate that, add that 0, and what happens is instead of a 40 second settling time, I'm now down to 10 seconds. The little 0 made a huge difference in terms of a circuit. All that changes is I add that resistor. Um, used to be I just had a capacitor resistor. Now for about 0.9 cents, I can make that a PI compensator. To design it as, we've got three degrees of freedom, two constraints, somebody's, somebody's arbitrary. I just picked R1 to be one meg. As S goes to infinity, I begin at five. S goes to infinity, this is a short, so that becomes 199k. And then the zero, one over RC is 0.3, C is three microfarads. In terms of software, all I do is to add, modify one line of code, and you can see where I add it. I have k of s is 5 times s plus 0.32 over s. That's p is equal to 5. The i is 5 times 0.32. So it's 5.05 .05 times the error. s over s is 1. Plus 0.3234z. z is the integral of the error. If I take the step response, initially with the integrator, I start at 0 and came up. What the PI compensator does is it says my guess initially is now 5. It's like when the light starts turns green, instead of starting from 0 and slowly pushing on the gas pedal, trying to figure out where it needs to be, I'm going to start out at 5 and then back off. What that does, that gives me a much quicker system. So this is running the same time as it was before. Before it was really, really slow and painful. This one is much faster. And let's rerun it. Stop that simulation, rerun it. And notice the tip is going to go up to 1.2. There's my 20% overshoot. There it is. Comes back down. To get this response, the input is kind of wildly going up and down. Again, it's doing a search. There's some constant that I need at the input to hold the output at 1. It's trying to figure out what that constant should be. I chose 20% overshoot. That's going to make it oscillatory. That may not actually make sense. I just kind of did that to illustrate that it does work. Uh, it's going to search to find the input that gets you to here and oscillate because I chose complex poles. That's a PI compensator. Now I mentioned earlier that the reason we have a PID compensator is you have three knobs to adjust. Three knobs actually aren't too bad. Uh, for example, if I want to play with a single knob, an I compensator, this is the heat equation, model is the fifth order system. I'll take the error, integrate it times I, and the error times P. Well, let's, let's just do P. If I just want to have 20% overshoot, I would play with P until I get the right overshoot, and right about there is 20%. Done. That's one knob to play with. If I want to do an I compensator, get rid of P, and increase I until I get about 20% overshoot. And it's right around there. Notice it's a really, really slow system. That's one knob. To play with two knobs, I would iterate between the two. I'll get 20% overshoot with I, get rid of the overshoot with P. P kind of looks like friction. I is kind of like a spring. Make the spring stiffer. I get overshoot back. Now add friction to get rid of it. And notice there's kind of a sweet spot. I want to get the overshoot as low as possible. Uh, right about there. Now add more I. Try to find the sweet spot for P. And... I'm just about done. So it looks like that's the best I can do iterating. This is the same answer that I just got using root locus. P is 5. That's equal to K. I is equal to 1.6. 1 1.6. 1 if I can find the lecture notes. 1.6 is 5 times 0.32. So that's two knobs to play with. That's actually not too hard. Three knobs gets really tough. Three knobs is the PID compensator. Uh, turns out, now that we know root locus, PID actually isn't all that bad. 
what I do is I've got three knobs to play with, both the silver common denominator, and what I have is a second order numerator, meaning put two zeros anywhere you want, add a pull at s equals zero, and again k. So I'll add a pull at s equals zero, get rid of the pull at minus 0.32, get rid of the next lowest pull, that specifies the numerator, that tells you p over d and i over d, we'll multiply this out. g times k then is just your type 1 system plus the three remaining poles. Gives you the root locus in red. Find the spot on the root locus that intersects your damping line. That's minus 1.39 plus j 2.78. At that point, pick k so that g times k is minus 1. That gives you k is 5.6. So here's your compensator. If you try it, um, this is going to have a problem with MATLAB and VSIM. PID is a differentiator. MATLAB stores systems in state space form. VSIM stores systems in state space form. And I have to have as many poles and zeros to implement a system in state space. So I can't really do a different differentiator. Uh, one trick to get around that is let's add a pull at 20. 20 over s plus 20 adds a pull over here at minus, tw minus 20. But now I have as many poles as zeros. Um, that I can implement, and that's kind of what I did here. Added that pull at minus 20, changed the system slightly, zero stayed the same. Uh, that's your 5 times 20. And now I get an even faster system. That's a PID compensator. So kind of summarizing, if I go P versus I, PI, PID, the integrator made the steady state error go to zero. Uh, so all the PI, or the I, PI, PID, all have no steady state error. The settling time, the integrator made the system a lot slower. PI is almost the same as the original system, but now it's type 1. I essentially took that pull at 0.32 and slid it into the origin. Slows you down a little bit, but not a whole lot, and makes it now type 1. And PID is better tracking, much faster, if you can implement it. And to illustrate how three knobs are hard to play with, if you use root locus techniques, I don't really care. I know the ratio of pi and d. That's what it takes to put the zeros at minus 0.3 and minus 2. If I didn't know that, I could play with the knobs and say, here I tune the pi, pi. Now let's play with the d term. And that's kind of what d does. Let's get rid of the overshoot. Now bring it back with i. Try to get rid of it with d, p. Add more derivative. Uh, I'm not sure I'm doing this well. With some practice and some training, you can adjust three knobs. It's not easy. It's actually a whole lot easier if you understand control systems. I know where the zeros belong. This term right here is p over d. The next term is i over d. When you mul multiply it out, that gives you the ratio, and k is just d. Once you know what the poles are, this is actually an easier way to do it. So that's lecture number 24 for ECE 461 control systems, PID compensators.